my goodness. Hold on. All right, we got some comments here. I don't know where this is going to go, but I got a couple of good ones. So hold on to your seat. All right. Mark Hinkle, but Jesus Christ consumes him at his appearing. I assume Mark is referring to the Antichrist. And right, that's that's true. I'm not sure why you got the but there, but that's true, absolutely. And then he says, Yes, we will not beat them. They will and have worn us out. You must, <clears throat> excuse me, you must take every doctrine, no matter how or who taught it to us, and hold it up to the light of the Word of God. Bless you in Christ Jesus. That's right, that's right. Whatever men are teaching, I'm telling you, there are people that do not follow the Bible, but they follow preachers. So whatever the preacher teaches, that's what they teach. They completely ignore the Bible on a, a number of topics. Okay. Alex D. says, Thank you for your work, brother. You, you shall have reward in heaven. God bless you mightily in Jesus' name. So, getting nitpicky here. I think uh, when you read and study the Word of God and... Um, that sort of stuff you get rewarded now all right so when uh, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we all receive the same reward that's what I believe in uh, might be uh, good for a, a discussion later on but uh, thanks Alex good to hear from you buddy Robo good stuff brother thank you appreciate that now, <clears throat> BRL, this guy's got some good thoughts. So let's read this one. Hey, sorry about the confusion on the last comment as for the thousand years. Are you saying we are in it right now? Ruling and reigning with Christ. That's what the Bible says. Okay. He says, I do in to study that end time stuff. I think that's supposed to be, I tend to study the end time stuff. I was taught the pre-trib rapture. Yeah, and again, that goes back to my point that people aren't going by what the Bible says. They're going by what their preacher taught them, perhaps as little children, what have you, when they first became a interested in the Bible they learned what the preacher taught them and then they took the Bible and you've heard of this thing uh, confirmation bias so when they their worldview is such in such a way that when they read the Bible they read it in a way to fit their worldview their confirmation their confirmation bias and I guess the thought that hey maybe man's wrong and God's right never crosses their mind I don't know I wonder that about myself I worry I kind of worry about that I question that about myself do I practice this confirmation bias I certainly did when I first became a, a Bible believer when I first started reading the Bible and in fact uh, uh, let me share a conversation with you back in it must have been 10 years ago I was talking to an unbeliever uh, somebody that mocked and ridiculed the Bible and to be fair I was mocking and ridiculing him and I was posting on Facebook pictures of a of an ape with a Superman cape and uh, you know saying look guys you, this is who you are you believe you're a super monkey and it's true people that believe in evolution <clears throat> they believe believe that they are a super evolved monkey I think it's fair game it's fun it was all in fun of course he got he took it a little bit personal and then he was telling me well your Bible teaches a flat earth and I said no it don't and then I would uh, try to look up some verses and scratch my head and then I would google it and see what other people said and then I would post 
you know, um, what is that, Isaiah 40 or whatever it is. I can't even remember, remember now. Uh, it is he that sits upon, what is it, the circle of the earth? I don't even remember what the Bible says anymore. It is he that sits upon the circle of the earth. Well, there you go. It's a, it's a ball. Well, that's because I'm looking at it through the lens of a, uh, of the idea that earth is a planet. All right. So this is one of those verses that you could see this two different ways, depending on your worldview. And so also with the pre-trib stuff, you could see it two different ways depending on your worldview. In my opinion, after looking at the evidence, it's insanity. It makes me cringe to think that that the earth is a planet. It's not. It's clearly in the Bible that earth is not a planet. So also is it cringe worthy to suggest that there is a rapture coming before tribulation of Matthew 24 21 it's insanity because clearly there are people getting saved during this tribulation period in this tribulation period people are making a bigger deal out of it than what it needs to be all it really means is that things will be getting worse and worse all the way up until the end that's all that real that's all that it means it's not, a, you know, you're not going to turn on Fox News or CNN and you're going to see, wow, there's, you know, this going on and that going on. We're in the tribulation period. It's not, it's very subtle. All the way, it things are just subtly getting worse and worse and worse. And Jesus is laying that out, all these things that are going to happen and then the end's going to come. But when we're not going to, it's not going to be like, wow, the end's going to be here any second now. You hold on to your seat. It's not going to be like that at all. It's going to be a day just like today. It's going to be a moment just like right now when the end comes. And that's what Jesus is saying, but he's letting us know also that it's getting worse and worse and worse. And the older you get, the more you'll be able to recognize this. Because I'm telling you, things are not like they were in the 70s. This world has completely changed. And in the 70s, the 70s was nothing like what it was in the 20s, in the 30s. And I know this because of uh, talking with my grandmother. I had a lot of conversations about what life was like when she was a child. She loved talking about that stuff. So the world is just constantly changing, and it's not getting better. Okay, so let me continue. But then after reading and starting to feed myself, I saw it was wrong. In more than just one way, too. Yeah, no, in more than just one way. That's right. And the sad thing is there is no way you can convince these people that teach this nonsense any different. You can't. They won't listen. They shut off their ears. And there's something about... Um, what is that? What is that verse I'm trying to think of? Now... That's not, I got too many words in there. Let's see. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Alright, so, I mean, that's really what's happening. They're, they're just blinded by their worldview that there is this fantasy sci-fi period coming when uh, just like what they see in a, in, a, in a movie where you know all the saved people are taken away and then all the unsaved people have one last chance but they gotta fight off the zombies and, you know and they gotta you know, gotta have a silver bullet or whatever. They gotta have a special weapon, and they gotta endure to the end. And you know, I don't know, just ridiculous. I don't know, really. I don't. I, it's just ridiculous. It's a ridiculous scenario that's not supported by the Bible at all. Okay. So I appreciate that, BRL, and I'd like to talk more about that. Uh, please do. Uh, 
Let's further this conversation uh, on either subject, the thousand years or the pre-trib stuff. I appreciate those sorts of comments. Earth is scientifically, biblically, and measurably flat. Yeah, uh, Brad Forrester, I, I, uh, oh, Brian Forrester, I think, if I remember right, I'm, I've subbed, I subbed to a Brian Forrester, and he's a kind of guy that he's got great content on YouTube, and what he does is he goes over to, like, the pyramids and places where there's you know these monuments and caves and stuff old ancient stuff right and then uh, he does a fantastic job he's incredible the problem is he'll look at a stone and say well that's 10 billion years old uh, how the you know what does he get that how in the world do you look at a, a stone you're looking at a rock, man, and you're saying, look, this proves the Bible's wrong. That, I mean, you're completely going against the Bible when you make a claim that, well, this is 10,000 years old. Well, let's just spit on the Bible while we're at it. Well, where, are you, where do you come off? Yeah, who the hell do you think you are just pissing away the Bible and making this number 10,000 years? you got to be out of your mind, right? So... To me, it's insanity that the the conclusion he comes from what he's seeing, but it's the stuff that he's showing is fantastic. It's amazing. It and look, I I can't say because I don't know. Was this pre-flood or was this after the flood? And I think most of the stuff, you know, take like the pyramids. I think it has to be after the flood. I think the pyramids had to have been built during the time of or the time before Moses leading up to the time of Moses and then um, when they left when they the great exodus is when they they stopped uh, you know essentially it was the downfall and the end of the Egyptian empire if you will so anyways I you know that's a great uh, subject all by itself and it has nothing to do with what Brad Forrester said I'm just Riffin. Okay. Roderick. All right. I believe my friend here is a Atlanta Braves fan. And he says, much was fulfilled 70 A.D. Ah, there we go. Here we go. The magical number, 70 A.D. All right. Let's hear what he has to say first. When total destruction came to Jerusalem, that, that's not true, but whatever. Because of their unbelief and such, we just make up whatever. Okay, I know, Roderick, this is what people teach. All right. Just hold on to your seat. Relax, buddy. The scribes and Pharisees tried to hide from the face of the one they pierced. Okay. So... I'm going to slow boat this one, all right? Oh, my goodness. I can't even remember one single verse. can't remember nothing from the Bible. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well. Because of him, even so, amen. All right, so our friend Roderick is making the claim that this already happened. Apparently the preterists have gotten to him. And he now believes everything in the Bible has happened and that we're living in paradise with no sin. No death. Nobody's going to die. We're all saved. Roderick, come on, buddy. Where was I at? 
Scribes and Pharisees strive to hide from the face of the one they pierced. In my humble opinion, there is no more looking to an Israel for this. Okay. It's already been destroyed. Well, depends on how you define Israel. Okay. Now, as far as rapture goes, there is one where many are caught up. Then there's another when angels are sent to gather the elect. But I won't go into it because the Bible doesn't support a single thing I'm saying. I got you. I'm not equipped. Of course you're not because it's not in the Bible. I understand. That generation saw it. Matthew 24, verse 34. So that's what the preterists said. This, this rapture already happened. All right, so let's... Comfort our minds and take a look specifically at Matthew 24, 34. And it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away. Oh, excuse me. Verily I say unto you, um, This generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Right. So that would include uh, the gathering together of his elect. That would include the Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. That would include being after the tribulation, the sun darkened, the moon should not give her light, stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So all that happened according to the preterist, and now according to Roderick, because I have not known Roderick to be a preterist, and now he is, apparently. So, everything's happened. Uh, Jesus already come. He's already come. And so, you can't trust anything in the Bible because it's already happened. you got to just trust in what Roderick says. Is that what you're going to teach, Roderick? I mean, come on, buddy. 2 Timothy 2, verse 18. Who concerning the truth have erred? saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some, just like they overthrew Roderick's faith. Come on, buddy. Why not believe the simple truth of the Bible? Yeah, a lot of people are like that nowadays. they got to believe something fantastic, something crazy, out of your mind stuff, rather than the simple truth. I mean, isn't that what you're saying, buddy? Think about it. You're saying the, the resurrection has passed already. That generation saw. That's exactly what the preterists are teaching. The resurrection has passed already. It already happened. And then the, this idea that there are two resurrections. Well, this reminds me of a conversation I had years ago with a, a young fellow. He, I think he was like 19. And this guy knew more about the Bible than just about anybody I knew. It was amazing that somebody so young could be so knowledgeable in the scripture. But he claimed that there was over 20 returns of Jesus Christ. And his argument was that any time the Bible talked about Jesus returning and it was worded differently than another time, that was a specific return of Jesus. Okay, so... Um, and then he counted, he looked it up and counted, and there was over 20, I think he said like 23 times, something like that. And I thought, that's crazy. I mean, that's crazy that he knows so much about the Bible. But then to see the evidence in the Bible and not be able to connect the dots, that too is crazy. Because there's only one return of the Lord Jesus Christ, and when he comes, it is the end of the world. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And according to Roderick and his preterist buddies, the world has come to an end. Are you out of your cotton-picking mind? Is that what you believe? Now think about what's the first thing Jesus says after his disciples asked him about the end of the world stuff. The first thing Jesus says is, 
take heed that no man deceive you. And he goes on, doesn't he? For many will come in my name, saying, Jesus is the Christ, and shall deceive many. Right? And, I mean, if that wasn't enough, right? He goes on to say, Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Right? I'm telling you, people are, we're, we're living in a world of deception right now. And the deception is worse than ever before. There's never been a period of deception like this one. All right. <laughs> and think about this, verse 22. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, if this was about wars and absolute zombie, you know, a cop apocalypse or whatever you call that nonsense that they obsess about on on in Hollywood if it was about that <laughs> it's not about that I mean it's so ridiculous what Jesus is talking about over and over in this these verses is about how much deception there is in the world and there's going to be so much deception that it's going to be nearly impossible to know the truth. The only way you can know the truth is if you are born of the Spirit of God. And it ta that takes a miracle all by itself. And as you look at how they come after your children from a very young age and uh, it, it makes it just it's incredible it's crazy that anybody is saved in today's world because of all the this alternate world view that they present from a very early age uh, and so it's look except those days be shortened there should no flash be saved because the deception is that bad all right that's what that's talking about and think about this if then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Believe it not. More deception. For there shall arise false Christ. More deception. False prophets. More deception. And they shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And by the way, it is possible. It, ignorant people say, well, it's not possible to deceive the very elect. It is possible. And they, these guys will deceive you. If, it, if you let it be possible, right? Behold, I have told you before. Again, what's he talking about? He's talking about the deception in this world. It's going to be rampant. It's going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. All right, so anyways, and then our poor friend. <clears throat> he has fallen for this deception of preterism. And there's nothing I could say to get him out of it. He's got to figure it out on his own. But all I can do is say, look, man, the resurrection has not passed already. There was no, there's no two resurrections. There's no three resurrections. If you want to claim that, well, hey, Jesus is the first resurrection, yes. Absolutely. He has led the way for us. But there's not a second resurrection and a third resurrection and a fourth resurrection. There's Jesus resurrected from the dead, and now through him we will resurrect from the dead at his return when he comes in the clouds of heaven. Very simple stuff. So, uh, yes, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, anyways. Uh, yeah, so, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Right, so all these things that Jesus is talking about, they're going to be happening, or they have happened, all the way to the end. Okay. And, um, now, okay, so, all right, so this generation, 
Some people have thought that to mean 20 years. Some people have thought that to mean 70, 80 years. Uh, it's clearly not what this means in the, this context. This context is from um, that time to the time of Jesus till his return. That's the generation. Okay. And in this generation is when all these things will happen. There's no other possibility. No other possibility. That word generation can only mean the generation from the time of Jesus to the time of his return. Right. Not possible for it to mean anything else. All right, so thanks, Roderick. If you please follow up on this nonsense, because I'll I'll talk about it. I'll engage in conversation with you or anybody about that nonsense. It's important to talk about because I don't want other people to get swallowed up in that stuff. It's so ridiculous. Uh, it's hard to talk about, but I'll talk about it. Alex M E S, you say well. Everything they teach is contrary to the Word of God. Every single aspect of their doctrines is built over the centuries to contradict the laws in every biblical teaching. This is Satanism. It was enough to change his name and people accepted it. Uh, it was enough to change his... You're going to have to elaborate on that. This is Satanism. It was enough to change... Satan's name? I don't know what that means. It, this is Satanism. It was enough to change his name. And people accepted it. I'm not sure. Boy, that could almost go another way too, couldn't it? Yeah, but no, I agree with what you're saying here. Is that the Roman Catholic Church with their power and influence... And the way they built their system, if you will, they have uh, developed a very elaborate system to create this alternative worldview. So they, they've taken whatever the Bible says and built a new viewpoint. And they've, they've had the resources to do it because they've had all the, the wealth and power that they could possibly want and um, and then they've had the people and the resources to go out and implement these changes and influence the world all around the world and they've been doing this for uh, at least 700 years right uh, depending on you know what year it is now so if you could, Alex, just for a little clarity, what are you talking about? It was enough to change his name. I don't know what that means. Scott Merrow. Rapture is simply when the electromagnetic force, excuse me, the rapture is simply when the electromagnetic force that pushes us down stops. So this is where I cringe, man. Electromagnetic force does not push us down. That's imaginary stuff, but whatever. It will happen temporarily, and then the people will fall back to the ground and die. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's a good, good joke there. I like that. That's that's funny. But I cringe at this sort of stuff because people want to. Say, well, this is you know, flat earth, or there, there is no gravity, and this sort of ridiculousness. And I don't know why they tie this idea of gravity in with flat earth. Yeah, I cringe at it because it's mind-numbingly stupid, in my opinion. So, uh, if you want to understand the concept of gravity, read Genesis 1, verse 1. And it sums it up very simply, very perfectly. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
So the heaven is everything above ground. The earth is everything on the ground. So everything on the ground has weight. And that weight will fall to the ground without that separation. This is when gravity was created. You got the separation of air and ground. All right, so the theories on gravity are ridiculous. I absolutely agree with that. No question about it. The theories are uh, anything that goes outside of Genesis 1-1 is ridiculous. I'll agree with that. But to say there is no gravity, well, you should open up your Bible, take your magic marker, and just cross that one off. I mean, it's that, it's that ridiculous in my opinion, so I don't even want to talk about it anymore. So, uh, the electromagnetic, now electro, electromagnetic magnetism, if you will, is electricity and a magnetic field. Um, and that requires a constant supply of energy. So a magnet will have a stagnant magnetic field, an electromagnetic force or whatever will have energy applied to it, and therefore it'll have a circuit attached um, going through it. So in all this, if there was, if it was electromagnetic, we would be able to, <laughs> we would be able to tap into it. We can't. It's not possible. There's, we'd be able to detect it. We can't. It's not possible. There's no connection or correlation between this gravity and the electromagnetic forces. It. I don't know. To me, it's just. It sounds fantastic, and I know people have uh, made videos and. They've, um, you know, did all these experiments where uh, they put a 9-volt battery to their tongue and say, look, no gravity. I, you know, whatever they're doing, I don't even know. It's all nonsense. So anyways, Alex M-E-S. Here we go, buddy. But of course, it is later. I'm sorry. But of course, it is later. How else could we try them in the fire and refine them? How else could he try them in the fire and refine them? Because he would have shortened the times to prevent even the elect from perishing. In fact, he warns to wait beyond 2,160 days or 42 months. It is clear that certain torments are given to those who deserve them and not to the elect. What the people of God must fear is man. And his behavior influenced by the evil one. Who during the tribulation will lash out against the true faithful. I, I got to read that one again. It, it is clear that certain torments are given to those who deserve them and not to the elect. What the people of God must fear is man and his behavior influenced by the evil one, who during the tribulation will lash out against the true faithful. Uh, boy, there's a lot on that in that comment right there. All right, so we're just throwing that in and mixing it in with a bunch of stuff and rambling on. What the people of God must fear is man. <clears throat> I, that, I can't agree with that, Alex. I think that you misspoke there. I need some clarity on that. I really do. I don't want to comment uh, because this is so far out there. This is not consistent with, uh, with uh, the rest of your comments that I've, from my memory. I think you misspoke there, and I, I just need some clarity. There's something here that I don't understand. Maybe I need more coffee too. It could be me. Uh, yeah. 
2 Thessalonians 2 verses 8 through 10. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. It is the Pope. And it's so obvious. I don't know how anybody could not see it. I really don't. It's like, boom! Get punched in the nose. It's the Pope punching your nose saying, hey, it's me. I'm the Antichrist. Now, you don't get it? He's the Antichrist. Alright, so I, I think I'm caught up on the comments and I'm long-winded again. I wanted to make a two-minute video and this is going to end up about two hours. I'm not even sure, but uh, keep your comments coming. I appreciate them. Uh, it, um, it's a great way to um, learn. It's a great way, hopefully, for you to learn, and then it's a great way for me to learn as well.